Getting to America was supposed to be the hard part for thousands of our Afghan allies who evacuated alongside U.S. troops back in 2021. But now the ability to work and settle down in this country for many has turned into a harrowing challenge. Congress has not been able to reach agreement on permanent U.S. residency for the refugees, and many now fear the prospect of having to return to Afghanistan under Taliban rule. Devin Dwyer tonight looks at the stakes for families and the sticking points on Capitol Hill. It's an Afghan instrument playing an American song. Music now forbidden in Afghanistan under the Taliban has found refuge here, a church on Capitol Hill in Washington, raising money to support refugee families. Hamid is playing the tabla. His wife, Najin, is Afghanistan's first female music conductor. With their two-year-old daughter, they fled their country with thousands of other families 18 months ago. Now they're urging Congress to let them stay here. We came here without, like, the thing that we had, music books, music notes. You had no we, instruments, no, nothing. No. No. Just, but uh, I bring my button because they, I think they did not know anything about button. Like, what is this? They, they, if they see that, they will say, like, it's a stick. That baton led Afghanistan's all-female orchestra, a symbol of freedom for 20 years after U.S. forces drove the Taliban from power. Why is it so important to you to keep making music? We have a beautiful music. We have to keep it alive. It's our job. Well, first, when we came here... Najin is among 76,000 Afghan evacuees resettled in the United States and facing an uncertain future. While her family was recently approved for asylum, most have legal status that is temporary, expiring later this summer. What are you hearing? Are, are people nervous? They're so worried, and I, they are nervous. Even their families in Afghanistan, they're in danger, so they're so worried about them. So there should be some way that they can bring their family and they can stay here. Krish Vignaraja, a former senior State Department advisor, is president of Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, which has helped resettle 14,000 Afghan evacuees. These are our allies. They worked alongside the U.S. military. They worked at the U.S. Embassy. If Congress doesn't act, uh, th these people face the real possibility of having to return to Afghanistan. That's right. Abdul, a former interpreter for U.S. Marines, and his wife, Lima, and their three daughters, ages 14, 11, and 7, consider themselves some of the lucky ones. After a harrowing journey out of Kabul, helped in part by ABC News, they were approved for special immigrant visas and now building a new life in Northern Virginia. What goes through your mind when you see what's happening back home in Afghanistan now? We cannot ex accept that it, it, it will be a reality because no one imagined that in very short time they collapsed the whole country. ABC's Martha Raditz met Lima and Abdul at a U.S. military base last year, a stopover on their journey out of Afghanistan where they were vetted by authorities. They're still astonished by what they left behind. Women are a, half of our populations, but they are banned from schools, from work, from university, from everything. Do you think you would ever go back? Do you think you ever could go back? We couldn't go there because I have three daughters. Security. Today, Abdul works as director of safety and security at a Hilton hotel in Virginia. Lima, a preschool teacher at a local daycare. They say their daughters are thriving in school, but the family worries deeply about so many others like them without U.S. visas. We made a lot of sacrifices for the USA and for the U.S. government, for the U.S. nations. And we deserve to be a resident in USA. We don't want gift cards. We don't want food. Just send us, send to the Congress letters about Afghan Adjustment Act that we need it. The Afghan Adjustment Act would provide a path to green card status for Afghan evacuees and their families, require additional U.S. vetting, including in-person interviews, and expand efforts to help Afghan allies left behind in that chaotic withdrawal. What message are we sending to people in the rest of the world who stand with our soldiers? It's backed by Republicans, Democrats, and dozens of current and former military leaders, including Navy pilot and Afghan war veteran Jack McCain son of the late Senator John McCain. Flying and fighting alongside Afghan pilots was uh, one of the great honors of my life, and I truly believe that I still am 
vertical and on this earth because of many of their efforts. How serious is the situation right now for those allies uh, and friends of yours who are who are in this country waiting? This is life or death for anybody involved. To do nothing is to give people not just uncertainty, but the worry that they are going to get deported and they cannot then make safe, stable, or sustainable lives in the United States. McCain says Congress's inaction is un-American. The people who we don't know who they are. But Republican critics of the plan say the sticking point is security. The fact that you are not conducting the most standard interviews for tens of thousands of people brought to this country is astounding to me. The Department of Homeland Security Inspector General last year found many evacuees were not fully vetted. At least two resettled Afghans may have posed a risk to national security and the safety of local communities and were subsequently removed from the U.S. Do you think there should be movement on this? There should You should come to some agreement for tighter security? Well, let's, and, and well yeah, we should, absolutely, we should absolutely come to some agreement on tighter security. Advocates say the delay only compounds trauma and tragedy. I think we owe it to all those folks who helped us for all those years to try to give them a home. Do you think the security concerns have been met? I think they're over, uh, overblown. For Najin and Hamid, a certain and clear path to residency in America is needed and soon. My family is in danger in Afghanistan. Um, my husband's family is in danger in Afghanistan. They are musicians, they are artists, and they have to come here. This is as much about those families, they're still stuck there as it is you and your family. Yeah, like we have to be a voice for them. Our thanks to Devin for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.